Hello viewers, today is World Ozone Day. I extend my good wishes to you all on this occasion. International Day for the Preservation of the Ozone Layer or World Ozone Day is celebrated every year on 16th September. On December 16, 1994, the United Nations General Assembly proclaimed September 16 to be the International Day for the Preservation of the Ozone Layer. The date is very significant as it reminds us of the day way back in 1987 when the Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer was signed by many countries. The first World Ozone Day was celebrated on September 16, 1995. Last year, the theme for International Day 2021 for the preservation of the ozone layer was the Montreal Protocol keeping us, our food and vaccines cool. The theme of this year's World Ozone Day 2022 that is today is Montreal Protocol at the rate 35 Global Cooperation Protecting Life on Earth. The theme has been decided to save the life of people who survive on the earth and to protect the ozone layer and our environment. In fact, this year's theme celebrates three decades of remarkable international cooperation to protect the ozone layer and the climate under the Montreal Protocol. The theme also recognizes the wider impact the 35 years old Montreal Protocol has had on climate change. It's 35 years since the discovery of Antarctic ozone hole drew world attention to the impact of human activity on the global environment. The theme also underlines the need to act in collaboration, forge partnerships and develop global cooperation to address climate challenges and protect life on earth for our future generations. The Vienna Convention of 1985 is the first international agreement dedicated to the protection of ozone layer. The convention commits all countries to take measures to protect human health and the environment resulting from modifications to the ozone layer. An international treaty protocol to the Vienna Convention of 1985 for the protection of ozone layer was negotiated and signed by 24 countries and by the European Economic Community on 16th September 1987 in Montreal, Canada. This is popularly known as the Montreal Protocol on Substances that Deplete the Ozone Layer. It layer entered into force on 1st January 1989. Montreal Protocol is the first of universally ratified treaties in United Nations history. Why is ozone so very vital for the well-being of the earth? Have you ever thought about it? But before discussing this as to why is ozone vital for the well-being of the earth, let us first know about ozone itself. Ozone is a molecule consisting of three oxygen atoms, that is, it is an allotrope of oxygen. Ozone was first discovered in 1830s by the German scientist Christian Schoenbein. He identified a new compound in laboratory experiments using oxygen and named the molecule ozine derived from the Greek name which means to smell. In 1881, John Hartley experimented with ozone and found that it strongly absorbed ultraviolet light. He compared the absorption spectrum of ozone to the spectrum of sunlight as seen from the Earth's surface and found that they matched exactly. 
the ozone layer was discovered by the French physicists Charles Fabry and Henri Bousson in 1913. It is this thin layer which acts as the umbrella for our planet Earth. The properties of ozone were explored in detail by British meteorologist G. M. B. Dobson, who developed a simple spectrophotometer, the Dobsonometer, that would be used to measure stratospheric ozone from the ground. Between 1928 and 1958, eight, Dobson established a wonderful network of ozone monitoring stations. Which continue to operate to this day. The Dobson unit is named in his honor. It is used as a convenient measure of the amount of ozone. Dobson unit is a measurement unit for determining the total amount of ozone present in a vertical column of air above the surface of the Earth. The amount of ozone in a layer at 1,013 hectopascals atmosphere. And two ninety-eight Kelvin temperature, which measures one mm in thickness, is equivalent to hundred Dobson units. As you know, our atmosphere is made up of three layers: the ionosphere, the stratosphere, and the troposphere. The ozone layer occurs in the stratosphere, as you can see on your screens. The stratosphere is a layer of Earth's atmosphere. That is stratified in temperature, with warmer layers higher up and cooler layers further down. The layer with the highest concentration of ozone molecules is found in the stratosphere. As you can see on your screens, the troposphere is the lowermost portion of the Earth's atmosphere, and the one in which most weather and the greenhouse effect occurs. Ozone in the atmosphere. Is not at all packed into a single layer at a particular altitude about Earth's surface, but it is dispersed. So do not imagine that we have a single layer of ozone. Actually, the ozone layer must be visualized as a region where ozone is most prevalent, and this is what again you can see on your screens. This is the layer where ozone is most prevalent. This is how it is. Present in the atmosphere, located 16 to 35 kilometers above the Earth, the stratosphere contains about 90 percent of all atmospheric ozone. That means this total column of ozone is equivalent to 300 Dobson units, and we know that one Dobson unit is equivalent to 0.3 centimeters thick layer at one atmosphere. You have to remember that ozone is not the most concentrated gas in the entire stratosphere. Its maximum concentration is only in the middle stratosphere. And now, what is this maximum concentration of ozone in the ozone layer? Maximum of ab absolute concentration is at about twenty-three kilometers, and it is up to ten to the power of thirteen molecules per mL. And the maximum of relative concentration is at about thirty-five kilometers. That is up to ten p. And there, the concentration is up to ten ppm. This I have shown you graphically, which you can see on your screens. That the ozone concentration is optimum between fifteen kilometers to thirty-five kilometers, and it is maximum. At twenty-three kilometers, which is shown by on the graph by a red peak at twenty-three kilometers in stratosphere. Now, can you imagine how thick is this ozone layer? If of all of the ozone was to be compressed to the pressure of the air at sea level, it would only be three millimeters thick. That is one eighth of an inch. In other words, I could say, as you can see on your screens, it would be equivalent to it would be as thick or thin as a coin 
that is it would be just 3 millimeters thick. So, that means the ozone layer occupies very less space. Now, the question arises how much ozone is present compared to the atmosphere? If all the air in a vertical column that extends from the ground to the space were collected and squeezed together at a temperature of 0 degree Celsius and a pressure of 1 atmosphere, then the column would be just 8 kilometers or 5 miles thick. Now, if we look into the physical properties of ozone, then we find that ozone is an inorganic molecule with the chemical formula O3. It is a pale blue gas with a distinctively pungent smell. It is an allotrope of oxygen that is much less stable than the diatomic oxygen. And this ozone breaks down in lower atmosphere to oxygen. So, if you see on your screens, what you will find that ozone in presence of light dissociates to give us oxygen and a free radical. And then this ozone then reacts again with the free radical to give us two molecules of oxygen. So, what do we find that the net, the net reaction two molecules of ozone in presence of UV light dissociates to give us three molecules of oxygen. So, that means ozone molecules are being continuously exposed to UV radiation and these UV radiations destroy ozone molecules by dissociating them. Therefore, ozone needs to be continuously replenished. Sidney Chapman in 1930 proposed a series of reactions to account for the formation and maintenance of ozone layer. This multi-step process requires sunlight and is popularly called as the Chapman cycle or only oxygen chemistry. In Chapman cycle, three allotropes of oxygen are involved which are oxygen atoms, oxygen gas or diatomic oxygen and ozone which is triatomic oxygen. So, what do we find that ozone is formed in the stratosphere when the oxygen gas molecules photolyzed by solar radiation. This you can see on your screens that is when it reacts with the UVC and we know that UVC is having the shortest wavelength in the UV region that is 200 to 280 nanometers. The high energy photons in this UV light converts single oxygen molecule into two oxygen radicals. In the next step, the two oxygen radicals then combine with a separate oxygen molecule to create ozone molecule and this is the only step where the ozone is being generated and in this step lot of heat is also evolved. Now, these ozone molecules absorb UV light following which now this ozone will react with another oxygen molecule with an ozone radical to produce two oxygen molecules. Here again ozone is being dissociated. Another way in which ozone can be converted into oxygen is that oxygen ozone absorbs solar radiation and produces molecular oxygen and other free radical that is oxygen free radical. Now, this is a continuing process that terminates when oxygen radical recombines with an ozone molecule to make two oxygen molecules. So, as you can see on your screens in diagrammatically what we have shown that oxygen undergoes photolysis to form ozone free radical and now this ozone free radical reacts with an oxygen molecule to give us an ozone. Now, there are two pathways which ozone can follow either it can react with an ozone free radical to form an oxygen molecule or it can undergo photolysis to form an oxygen free radical which will again react with a oxygen molecule and thus the circle will continue. So, the overall amount of ozone in the stratosphere is determined by a balance between a photochemical production and recombination. A total of 350,000 tons of ozone is formed 
and broken down everywhere. A zone is constantly being created and destroyed by the Chapman cycle as we have seen. And these reactions are natural processes which have been taking place for millions of years. Because of this, the thickness of ozone layer at any particular time can vary greatly. Oxygen is constantly being introduced into the atmosphere through photosynthesis, so the ozone layer has the capability of regenerating itself. Ozone layer is a result of oxygen only chemistry. Ozone was formed once the photosynthetic marine organisms that is cyanobacteria began re re releasing molecular oxygen into the atmosphere. This resulted in a gradually changing the once reducing atmosphere into an oxidizing one. This event has been called as the oxygen revolution. In hel it helped to make ozone minimize UVB and the migration of living beings from water to a terrestrial habitat. Imagine if there was no ozone layer, life on earth would not have been possible. So what does this ozone layer do for us? Why is the stratosph stratospheric ozone so important for our existence? The ozone layer or ozone shield is a region of Earth's stratosphere that absorbs most of the sun's UV radiation. By doing so, the ozone layers function as a sunscreen or an umbrella for all living organisms, which you can see on your screens also. Here, umbrella is depicted as a ozone layer, which is preventing the harmful UV rays from coming to the Earth. The ozone layer filters out wavelengths shorter than 320 nanometers and converts them into heat. These wavelengths would otherwise be dangerous to all life forms. This is the reason why the ozone layer is hotter than other parts of the atmosphere. UV radiation from sun is classified into three primary types. It is very important to know what are these types and what are the effects, how will they penetrate the earth the ozone hole and reach earth. UVA, ultraviolet A is depicted by writing UVA, ultraviolet B is UVB and ultraviolet C is UVC. These are classified as UVA, UVB and UVC based on their wavelengths. As you can see on your screens, the ultraviolet spectrum, what do we find that the wavelength of UVC is minimum, that is it is 200, whereas that of UVA is maximum, that is it is 400. So that means that the energy of UVC would be maximum and that of UVA would be minimum. Now since UVA is the shortest wavelength of the three forms, that is between its wavelength is between 100 to 280 nanometers, the shorter the wavelength, the more harmful is the radiation. UVC is not a risk to us as it is absorbed completely by the ozone layer and thus it is not able to penetrate Earth's atmosphere. UVB is the second shortest wavelength that is 280 to th between 350 nanometers and the main culprit of sunburn. Almost 95 percent of UV UVB gets absorbed by the ozone layer and it is only 5 percent which gets through and reaches the earth. The UV rays are stronger or weaker depending on the time of the day and season. There is a strong link between UVB rays and skin cancer. UVB, UVB rays damage skin over time. So high exposure of UVB radiation can cause skin diseases, even skin cancer. Fortunately for life on earth, our atmosphere stratospheric ozone layer shield us from most of the UVB radiation. As you remember, it is only 5% of the UVB radiation which reaches the earth. It affects human health both positively and negatively. 
short exposure to UVB radiation is helpful in generating vitamin D for bone development. The World Health Organization recommends 5 to 15 minutes of sun, sun exposure to 2 to 3 minutes times a week. UVA is the short, longest wavelength that is between 315 to 400 nanometers. UVA constitutes, constitutes 95% of UV radiation that penetrates the Earth's atmosphere. This is the form of radiation that causes skin aging like spots and wrinkles by penetrating deep into skin. UVA radiations also appear to be linked to cancer. UVA rays can penetrate glass and clouds and even cause harm on overcast days. They can also pass through the windshield of our vehicles. That is why we say even if the day is cloudy, one should wear sunscreen and go out. And as you can see on your screens now, that UVB is absorbed completely by the ozone layer. It is only 5% of UVC is absorbed completely by the ozone layer. UVB is absorbed 95%, that is only 5% reaches the earth and UVA is absorbed only 5% and 95% of UVA reaches the earth. Now what you have to remember that ozone is not found only in the stratosphere. This gas also exists much lower down in the troposphere. How are these two zones different? The ozone layer in the stratosphere acts as an umbrella and shields us and other living beings from sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation and this is called ozo good ozone. Ozone created by chemical reactions between oxides of nitrogen and volatile organic compounds in presence of sunlight at the ground level is called bad ozone. So what you can see, we have good ozone in stratosphere and we have bad ozone near the earth's surface in troposphere. Troposphere ozone causes considerable damage to plants around the world including agricultural crops and plants in natural ecosystem. So it is a phytotoxicant. And please remember, bad ozone is also a pollutant which causes various respiratory diseases in humans. So now we have two zones, good ozone which prevents UV rays to, from coming to earth and bad ozone which causes pollution. Now, surprisingly, Venus also has a thin, thin ozone layer at an altitude of 100 kilometers above the planet's surface. Now the question is, can we migrate there? I leave this to your imagination that Venus has an ozone layer at an altitude of 1 kilometers. Can we migrate there? Think and answer. Thank you.